Now the other thing I want to talk about is is changing the pattern to meet your needs. Now the previous owner actually did this where she put a pencil mark in to change the shoulder shape. Um, instead of doing just a, dull, a, a drop shoulder, she wanted something a little more shaped. Now, because she didn't change the sleeve on the other side, my belief is that she actually was making a vest. Now, this style of pattern has directions on the sheet. These are, I guess you'd call them aftermarket patterns. These are not the patterns that came with the machine. They were bought separately. Now this one, you can see there's no writing on it except the actual measurements. This is one of the patterns that came with the machine and all the instructions for knitting this pattern can actually be found in the manual for the knit contour. So if we go to the back here, which is where all of these are, we'll find A5, A5. And this will actually tell you how to knit the entire pattern. But if you don't have the manual or you don't have the ability to download it or print it out, you can still make these patterns without it. It just requires a little more intuitiveness on your part. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I got all the patterns that are in that book and I've cracked that book once. Um, and it's just because I understand how these work. They kind of work very similarly to sewing patterns, and I sewed before I knit. So I kind of understood how these worked right out of the gate. Let's talk a little bit about measurements and where your numbers come from. <clears throat> when you're taking your body measurements, and this is really geared towards the Americans in the group, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna pick on you for a minute. Um, I am one, obviously, you can tell from the accent. Back in grade school, we learned this clever little thing called the metric system. And unfortunately, by the time we left grade school, we never used it again. Unless, of course, you're one of those handy people and you understand metric sockets, which still doesn't really teach you anything. You just know that you need that 13 millimeter rather than that three quarters. Um, so unfortunately, as Americans, we're a little behind the game here. Um, and y'all, you UKers can laugh all you want. It's perfectly okay. However, for the purposes of using your knit contour, do yourself a favor and start using centimeters. People in the UK will tell you it's more accurate. And as Americans, we'll roll our eyes and say, yeah, whatever. Well, let me show you. Okay, and I'm going to use this pattern as my example. We're also going to grab a standard tailor's tape. You can buy these at any craft store in America and they come in a couple of varieties. However, this one is my favorite and I'll show you why. On one side, you have inches and we have always been told that four inches equals 10 centimeters. That is the rule. So your brain will say that eight inches equals 20 centimeters and 12 inches equals 30 centimeters. However, your brain would be wrong. <clears throat> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. Um, if you flip this particular one over, what you find on the other side is that it's got inches on top and centimeters on the bottom. Um, you can also get these where there are inches on one side and centimeters on the other. Those are a little easier to read. Now we're going to start with what we've all been told. Okay, that four inches right here equals 10 centimeters. Now the first thing you may notice is that's not true. 10 centimeters is slightly smaller than four inches. Not much, one millimeter, not a whole lot. You know, it's not a big deal, right? Okay, I now have a cat on my desk, so if he ends up in the uh, the camera, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get you out of the way. Okay, so four inches is almost 10 centimeters. They almost work. Let's go down to eight inches because math says that eight inches should equal 20 centimeters, doesn't it? Sweetheart, I need you down. Thank you. Okay, so here's our eight inch mark right here. Here's our 20 centimeters. As you can see, that's pretty off. It's, uh, let's see, what is that? That's about three millimeters. In, in inch speak, that's about an eighth of an inch. And it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that could be a full stitch when you're working. 
And again, you're like, one stitch, what's that? But it's one stitch every eight inches. So if you are working a 40 inch bust, that's five stitches. Five stitches could be a whole inch that you are short or over. And it gets even worse from there. And unfortunately, the patterns lie to you. So let's talk about how the patterns lie to you. Okay, right here, we're going to just look at the smallest size, right? This tells you that 86 centimeters is 34 inches. And that is the finished measurement for the full hip. Okay, fine. Let's look at 34 in inches on my tape. This cat and I are not agreeing <laughs> today. Meet darkness. She never likes attention unless I'm actually busy. <laughs> yes, she's licking my hand. <laughs> okay, down you. Okay, 34 inches. Sorry for the distraction, folks. 34 inches equals 86 centimeters? Not even. So if you're an American and you have a 34 inch hip, congratulations. What you're going to find is that it's actually going to be a little smaller than what you expect it to be. So, use the centimeters. Use the centimeters. Use the centimeters. Take your measurements in centimeters. Learn how to use them. At the end of the day, it is only numbers. Numbers and math work the same the world over. That doesn't change. But be aware that inches to centimeters lie okay be very much aware of that yes uk your number system is much better than or your measurement system is much better than ours centimeters are in fact much more accurate all right the things that you're actually going to see on a pattern page we're going to start at the bottom of this and work our way up because pants actually have a really neat thing going on with them um, so we're going to start down here, okay? So this is where you cast on, you knit from one to two, and then you fold it in half. This, this little marker kind of lets you know that that's what's happening. You're making a casing. It's not a hem because this is at your waistline. That's a casing for elastic. And then it's got this weird little triangle doohickey, and three is way over here, but two is back here. This is short row shaping, okay? This is what it actually would look like if you tried to draw out your short rows. So basically what's happening here is when you hang your hem and you knit your one row to close it up, all of a sudden you, you have no line. It's, it's gone. You're going to have five or six stitches right here that are still in play. So what you're going to do is bring all those other needles forward into hold, set your carriage to not knit held stitches. And then you're going to work short rows until you're back to your full. And as the pattern advances, it's going to tell you when to put needles back into play. Once you're at three, you work your happy little heart away, slowly increasing on this side and even slower increase on this side. But there's this 4A over here. Well, the A is for the size, but there's this number four over here with a line underneath it. That line denotes that you need to put a yarn mark there. Hang a little bit of yarn on the edge of your knitting right there. And what this is for is matching up your sides when you're sewing up. Um, my suggestion is to have a handful of removable stitch markers in different colors and just hang those on the edge. That way, you know, if you've got two reds, those go together. If you've got four yellows, those are going to go together. So on and so forth. It just makes your life easier, especially if it takes you a little while to get through all the pieces of a pattern. Color coordination makes it visually easier to put it together at the end. Now you're going to continue, continue with these rapid, rapid increases all the way up to five. Now at five, you're going to start decreasing on this side. Now this side does decrease a little bit. You're heading towards the knee. And when you get to the knee, that's number six. And there's another one of those little underlined hash marks, hyphens, whichever you choose to term them. You want to put another yarn mark there. And that is so that when you put it together, 
your leg actually looks like a leg, doesn't look all skewed. Now, from here, you have to make a choice. These flare just a little bit. You're starting to increase again back down, but it, you may want straight leg and not boot cut. You may not want a slight bell at the bottom of your pants. It's perfectly okay to not increase and just knit straight to the end. You don't have to increase. Um, for a more modern appeal, I tend to make a straight leg pant um, because they're not denim. They're not jeans. I, I, I just don't like the look of a knitted flared pant. Now when you get down to the bottom, you're going to get another yarn mark. Now this yarn mark is for your bottom hem. Now you can, in fact, with a little ingenuity, hang your hem on the machine. This pattern is going to have you bind off and then fold your edge back to the yarn mark and seam it. And either way is perfectly fine. In the beginning, you may find that it's much easier to fold it and seam it than it is to try and pick up a row and, and try and keep it straight and, and knit that off. Now, in this pattern, you're actually going to make two of these sections. This is the back. And you can tell it's the back because of those short rows. Now, what short rows on the back of a pair of pants does is it raises the back waistline to account for the swell of your bum. Okay, none of us like to talk about our bums. It's a pretty, pretty hush-hush kind of uh, conversation. However, if you are narrow-hipped, and don't have much of a bum, you may find that a man's pants pat pattern accommodates your shape just a little bit better. And there's no shame in that, and trust me, nobody will ever know. If you are a little fuller figured, you may find that you wanna make your short rows just a little bit tighter so that you have more of them to accommodate the curves that you have. That's trial and error. You're going to have to figure out what works for your shape on your own. From here, we're going to go to the machine and we're going to set it up and we're going to proceed forward. Mm -hmm.